Thanks for joining us today at Heartland. We're excited about the series that we're in right now about great prayers. We believe God's gonna be doing some big things in our community, in our church, but also in your personal lives this year. And we would love to connect with you about that. If you would like to celebrate some of the great prayers that God's answering throughout the year or in your personal life, um, or even if you would like us to pray with you on some great prayers, we'd love for you to connect with us. If you would email us at pastorphil at hcc3d.com, we would love to join you in that prayer. Also, if you, if you have time or if you'd like to join us in sharing this message of what God's doing, we would just love for you to connect with us on social media. And then also, if you'd like to join in what God's doing in our community and missions locally and internationally, you can join us on our website at hcc.ag and just click on the giving tab and you can see God do incredible things uh, through your generosity. We're going to get ready to jump right into service with Heartland today. It's incredible to see what God is doing. I, I told you a couple weeks ago, anytime you share vision with, with, with a church and people, you always have a little bit of that reluctance of, you know, it's like telling your parents you're going to have another baby or another grandchild when they already got eight. And, uh, you know, you're going to make it nine. And are they going to be excited? They go, yeah. Are they going to say, oh, another baby, something else to do? More work. Come on. Parents feel that way, right? Well, that's kind of how the church is, and I uh, understand that. But I also understand it's amazing to be able to live our lives and walk by faith and not by sight. It's amazing to know that we're part of a bigger kingdom, and God sees more than just sometimes our little photos. There's a big picture that God is working with in our lives. Amen. So if you got your Bibles, I want you to open them to Philippians chapter 3. want to welcome our MPH, welcome Westfield, Wadata, North Justin, our online campus. Come on, would you give all of our campuses a good heartland welcome this morning? We're glad you guys are here. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about this particular passage of Scripture. I, I told you last week, God doesn't answer stupid prayers, okay? Now, now, and we pray stupid prayers sometimes, but God does it. Listen, he, he, he does do strange things sometimes. God will at times do hard to understand things in our lives, but he doesn't answer stupid prayers that we pray. There, there are certain prayers God guarantees he answers, okay? Certain prayers. Let me, let me tell you one. When you pray a prayer like, I surrender. You understand that God always honors a surrendered heart. He always honors people that come to him and says, Lord, I just give everything to you. When you pray a prayer that, that Jesus taught us in Matthew 6, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You believe God always answers that prayer? Yeah, why? Because it's in his word. It's part of his heart. Let me tell you another prayer God always answers. Oh, Lord, Lord. Forgive me. Aren't you glad of God's forgiveness? And listen, the Bible teaches us that whenever we sincerely ask God for forgiveness, whoever comes to him and confesses our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. He answers the prayer, O oh Lord, lead me. He answers the prayer, Lord, use me. And then he answers the prayer that Paul is praying here in Ephesians chapter 3. I pray that from his glorious ultimate resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as, to, as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. May you have the power to understand as all of God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to, to fully understand that you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. That is a prayer that God will answer. So this morning, right out of the gate, I want you to understand if you will listen to what God's Word says. And if you will be willing, and I will be willing, to pray this prayer in faith and sincerity, we can guarantee God's going to do that. Are you with me? 
So, so let me ask you the question. Why, why did Paul pray this? For, for what reason is he, is he addressing the Ephesus church? He, he's not writing them to correct false doctrine. Paul doesn't write the, 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 the Christians at Ephesus to somehow or another condemn some type of sin that's going on in their life. Paul is writing the church at Ephesus because he doesn't want them to forget their experience that they can have with Jesus Christ. Paul has been telling them all the way through Ephesians 1, 2, and we get to 3. He said, listen, you've been raised up in Christ. You've been made to sit together in heavenly places. Don't forget that. Don't live on the low rim of this world when God has raised you up to sit together in heavenly places. He went on to say, he reminds them, hey, you've been made alive by the grace of God. That, that you have been included in God's family. In other words, God's got this tremendous, diverse family. And guess what? He brings every one of us in. There's no stepkids with God. Come on, somebody. There, there's no kids that you have to be over here because you're a little bit lower. No, no. Every one of God's people are in his family. Paul reminds us of that. And Paul is saying, listen, it's so easy for us to forget, especially when you're having some difficulties or struggle in your life. And Paul has those things. He tells us in verse 13 of chapter 3, he said he reminds us of the trials that he suffers as a minister of the gospel. And... Uh, Paul said, listen, I understand when you get in a battle and you go through a struggle, you're going through an adverse circumstance. It's so easy sometimes to forget who you are and whose you are. Come on. It's so easy sometimes to forget what he brought you out of and what he has brought you into. Particularly when you have agony or hurt going on in your life, you got this spiral of disappointment and despair happening. So Paul is writing the church at Ephesus, he said, I, I, I don't want you to forget. And he talks in great detail back in chapter 1 and 2. But write this down. Listen, these believers, that they knew the theological truth of their being welcomed to God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. But they needed to be empowered by it. Come on, some people know the theological truth of, well, you come to Christ, you confess your sins, you are saved. You, 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 know, you are redeemed. You, you, your, your home is going to be in heaven when you die. Some people know the theological truth to that, but guess what? They're not experiencing it. Some people know the theological truth that when you get in Jesus Christ, all things pass away. Behold, all things become you. And yet they are not experiencing that. Are you with me? So Paul is saying here, I, I, I want you not just to know this truth in your head. I want you to be empowered by it. I, I'm praying that you can experience an empowerment, an enablement to live out this life in Jesus Christ. And it, it, it's not something we have to do in ourselves. It's, 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 it's not something that we can create in ourselves. But Paul prays this prayer because he said, listen, don't forget where you come from. What God's doing. Don't forget who you are and whose you are. Don't forget about his. And he talks about, he uses a phrase, uh, uh, a phrase there, according to God's riches. Now, he didn't say out of God's riches. How many of you understand that God has a system of unlimited supply while the world has a system of limited supply? The world can only give us something out of or according. But God, when he gives, he gives you according to his riches. Let me illustrate that. Let, let, let's say you come to me and you say, hey, you know, Pastor Phil, I've got, the, I've got this bill and, and I really need to get this thing paid and I need $1,000. And let's say I got $100,000 in the bank and you ask me, and I'm your friend, I want to help you, and I go and I write out you a check for $100. Now, I've given you something out of my riches, but I didn't give you according to. Come on, you understand that? 
It, because what? That $100 is not going to meet your need. That, that $100 is going to en- enable you to put something on it. Come on, come on. I'll put something on it. <laughs> but when you have a need, you need more than be able to put something on it. The Bible says when God does what he does in our life, he doesn't do it just out of his riches. He does it according to And listen, God owns everything. Well, I'm going to preach to somebody. Help me now. As great as God's riches are, that's how sufficient he is. As great as God's riches are. So everything that God does, Philippians 4, 9, he said, he meets and supplies all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You see, some of us live our lives asking for things that is limited because we think God is limited. God, oh, this is 21st century now, Pastor Phil. It's a, you know, it's a new year. And you you got to be careful. Cancer's a big thing. Alzheimer's a big thing. I mean, you know, God can raise the dead, but I'm not sure if he can heal the sick. Come on. Why is that? Because we live out of the theology of what God says he is and what he's doing. We don't live out of the empowerment of it. So that's the reason why Paul is bowing down. He said, God, for this reason, I'm going to pray. He's going to ask for five things. Write this down. Here's the first one. He prays for inner strengthening. He asks that we might be strengthened with might through his Holy Spirit in the inner man. Inner strengthening in the inner man. Now watch this. Listen, most of us in our culture today, we are bombarded with trying to strengthen the outer man. But do you understand the outer man never really shows the glory of God? The outer man focuses on my, we, we clothe the outer man, we dress the outer man, we feed the outer man, we comb the outer man, we part the outer man, we primp the inner man, we wash the outer man, we dry the outer man, we smear cream on the outer man. Nothing of that brings glory to God. Now I'm glad we all use deodorant because if we didn't, we'd all be stinking. Come on, because we're dying. You took a shower this morning, flesh come off of you. It's down the drain. Part of you died today. Come on. It's just a cycle. But have you ever thought about how much time we spend on the outer man? But Paul says, listen, I'm praying that you get strengthened on the inner man. Our outer man is in a continual decline. The outer man is perishing all the time. And yet that's where most of us spend our time. God's glory is shown in our weaknesses where he himself provides strength for us. And it comes inward outwardly, not outwardly inward. It's the reason why so many men and women throughout history that were mightily used of God, if you looked at them on the physical term and you say, that person, they don't look like very much. We had a lady, and I, I, I wish I could have got the photograph. We had a lady that, that does evangelistic crusades in Africa, evangelist lady, real tall. She is German, right, German. She was German, John. She was German, and her arms, I kid you not, her arms, they, they I mean, I, I felt like, you know what, that, a good wind going to blow that girl away. But when she stepped up, And she started preaching under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I got afraid of her. She scared me. Because she had so much power. It was an anointing on her. And she would speak to the spirits. I didn't give you a story that she told. She said, I had this lady in a prayer line. And she said, this lady come up. And and, and she had a cane with her. And she's all been over And she said, I just kind of assumed it was something with her legs. So I knelt down and prayed for her legs and prayed for strength. And I went over here and prayed for other people. And and about five minutes later, the altar worker said, come, 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 Evangelist. Said, she's healed, she's healed. And I look over there, and she's standing there, she's praising God. And I'm thinking, wow, you know what? But she's still got her cane. What's wrong with her? And they said, no, 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 no. She wasn't crippled. She's blind. She uses that cane. But now she's healed. 
Her eyes are open. Her discernment was totally wrong. It didn't matter. The power of God showed up. Some of us think we got to know this, the precise thing to pray for. I, I need to know to the T. No, all you need is faith and trust in God that He's able to do exceedingly abundantly of all that we ask or think. Paul writes this in 2 Corinthians 4 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though the outwardly, though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. I like that. The inner man is the real you. The inner man, your soul, your thought, your actions. The inner man is what makes us the outward man. It's the color of your hair, your height, your weight, the color of your eyes. The inner man is your soul, your spirit. And Paul is praying, listen, I want you to have strength in the inner man through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's not for outward power to show. It's for inward endurance in times of trials and struggles. We can stand strong in the outer man when everything's good and everything's going well. You're healed. You're healthy. But when you get the report and you fight the relationship that's broken and you have to fight a job layoff and you go through financial struggle, that outward man can perish, but it's then that inward man stands up. God is still God. He was God before the report. He's God after the report. He was God before the financial problem. He's the God after the financial problem. He was the God before the relational breakup. He's the God after the relation. My God is able. The inner man stands up. That's what Paul is saying. Listen, listen. You and I never get God's power in our life until we focus on the inner man. Strengthening. He's talking about growing strong. We'll never be able to stand firm in faith until we have this inner man that's built up. So Paul is saying, man, I'm praying for you, inner man. Lord, I want you to release your power in, in their life. That's what he's saying. Don't limp along, inadequately faltering at everything. The inner man. The inner man. I, I, I look at people, and I, pardon me, uh, Ernie, for just using you, but, but there's time, the outward man, the, the outward man is, is, is broken down. Ernie worked hard all his life, and, and, and things happened, and, and by his own admission, he didn't take care of himself like he should when a younger man, and he'll tell you that. But you look at the outward man, but you get to talk in the earning. You cannot have a five-minute conversation with that man. That faith doesn't rise up. Then all of a sudden, he looks like a giant again. He looks like a mighty man of God. That's what Paul is praying. Every one of us that we, my, 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 every one of us that we might be strong in the inner man. I'm praying for that, Paul says. How we need that in our culture, in our generation right now. Woo, I've got to behave myself. I'm sorry, North Justin, Wanita, Westville, NPH. The cameraman go berserk when I do that. Inner man thinks big, believes big, talks big, because God's big. So here's the second thing Paul said, okay, inner, inner strengthening. Strengthening in the inner man. Secondly, he said, I'm praying for a confidence in Christ's dwelling. He, he asks and he prays for that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now, that, that, that would appear to be a prayer that he shouldn't have to pray. Because isn't it a given that if you are in Christ and Christ is in you, is, isn't it a given, given that you understand that you have the hope of glory in you? But Paul, again, he, he's trying to move us away from the theological. Yeah, I know that theologically. I want you to experience it. I want you to embrace it. I want you to be empowered by it. Paul understands it's not a matter as if a Christ follower were saying, Oh, I'm, I'm saved. Yeah, I've got, the, I've got the Holy Spirit. But your life doesn't reflect it. You get slapped around by every battle and trial that comes your way. 
Every time you come up against a giant, you, you, you walk away, not, not uh, walking towards him in faith. You walk away and doubt. Oh, I don't know if you can do this, God. But Paul said we need confidence in Christ's dwelling Recognizing that he's there in us, rejoicing and trusting that we have his constant presence in us. Allowing him to have full reign. I want Christ. Now listen, here's what he's saying. I'm going to break this. He, he said, I, I want Christ to be at home in you. Now, there's a couple different Greek words he could have used there. What One refers to somebody that is inhabiting a place as a stranger. It's, it's, like, it's like somebody coming to your house and, 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 and just taking over the couch and not leaving. Wait a minute. You, you wasn't invited. I don't know you. And they just kind of hang out there. That isn't what Paul is talking about. The word that he uses, he uses it in a term of relationship. That someone that you have now have this relationship, you have invited them in, you brought them into your house and just settle, and they just settle down. They said, Oh, that is nice. I'm comfortable here. That Jesus would just make our hearts his home. You, you see that? You see him being led by the Spirit. Shouldn't be the exception today of so many believers. It should be the rule of the believer. Well, I just, I just never know what to do. I just, I get so confused. I, no, no, no. Listen, we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. And the Bible says that we can be led by the Spirit. One of the works of the Holy Spirit, when He shows up, He said, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you in all truth. And if Christ is at home in your life, then when you come up against those decision times, you, you say, okay, Jesus, help me out. What, what would you do, Jesus? You know, too many, too many people live their lives tuned in to the radio station, WIFM. What's in it for me? <laughs> people listen to that radio station all the time. Only the people that come to a church that, that doesn't want to use their gifts and talents and, and advance the kingdom is people that just said, and they keep their little dial tuned in to WIFM. What's in it for me? What are you going to do for me this year? What, what are you going to do for my kids? My, my, what, what's in it for me? When Christ is in us, he dwells in, his home is in us. We don't tune in to WIFM. We tune in to WIFJ. What's in it for Jesus? Come on. Some of you need to turn the dial. What's in it for Jesus? It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. And Jesus is at home. And listen, can I tell you how Jesus would respond to hurting and broken people? He was moved by compassion by those people. He didn't walk away like the, like the, 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 the Pharisee. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't turn their back. He was like the good Samaritan. He went down to the wounded person. He would go to the prison. He said, and as much as you do to the least of these, hey, you're doing it to me. Woo, good preaching, Pastor Phil. Paul said, listen, Christ wants that home feeling. How different do you think your life will be in 2020 if you decided that every day you pray, God, give me inner strength. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to put on cologne. I'm going to put on deodorant. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm, I'm going to try to watch what I eat. I'm, I'm not saying don't do that stuff. I'm not saying quit all that stuff. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. But why, how different would your life be? How different would my life be? If every day I said, Lord, if I spend five or ten minutes doing this, let me spend 20 minutes building my inner man. You see, some of us, we'll go to the gym, and we'll be in our 30 minutes, and time just flies. We can't set five minutes with the Word of God. Ooh, doggy. Did I just say that? Listen, we, we, we understand 
that in our lives we need, we, we need both heat and light. Listen, heat and light. When, when, you think about, when you think about the Word of God, the truth is the light that God gives us. The Spirit of God brings the heat. The Spirit of God brings the passion. And Paul again is saying, I just don't want this to be a theological thing that you, that you know. Oh, y'all Christ in me. Y'all greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And Paul said, listen, I just don't want you quoting the word. I just don't want you quoting the verse. I want you to experience that greater one. I want you not just to have the light and the truth. I want you to have the heat and the passion. John 14, 23, Jesus said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and the Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with you. Make our home with you. You understand, Christ wants to be comfortable around you. He wants your life to be so open to his lordship and leadership that when you're there and you're worrying and you're fretting and, and, and you're, God says, listen, I want you to, I'm not going to walk away from you. I want to come close to you. I want to bring you, and I want you to cast all your care upon me. Be at home with Jesus. Come on, are you with me? Inner strength, confidence in Christ. Here's the third thing he prays. An understanding of his divine love. Now, again, not just to know his love, to experience it. He prayed that we would be rooted and grounded in love, that we'll be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. You, you look at the cross and you just think about the, the, the breadth and the length and, and how the height and the depth. Listen, the cross represents the love of Jesus Christ. It's there talking about it. It reveals to us. And Paul said, listen, I want you to believe that Jesus loves you. I want you to believe it to the breadth of it. I want you to believe it to the length of it, to the height of it, to the depth of it. He said, listen, I want you to experience it. I can't comprehend that. He said, Paul said, listen, you can't do it in the flesh. Are you with me? People tell me all the time, they will say this. Well, you know, Pastor, I just don't understand how God loves certain people. And you know what I say? Wow. Neither do I. The Bible says you can't do that. But you can know it and you can experience it by just looking at the cross. Listen, every one of us need to be reminded of the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of the love of God in our life. But we never look at another individual that God doesn't have that same kind of love for. We, we don't run into people who God says, oh, they're a hard case. I don't, know if, I, don't know, I don't know if my love is sufficient. God says, no, share my love, show my love, speak my love. Let them see my love in you. Be an example. Jesus said, by this, all men are not going to know you're my disciples. Why? Because you got to love one to the other. So for some of us, our, our love isn't deep enough. It isn't wide enough. It isn't high enough. You have a little, little love. And you meet somebody that doesn't look like you, talk like you, sound like you, live like you. You say, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, Jesus says, I'm in you. I'm dwelling in you. I'm giving you inner strength. And oh, by the way, I want you to really experience the love of God. I want you to know how powerful that love is. And then he says, the fourth thing, he says, I, I want you, and he prays, that you might be given an experience of his divine fullness. And what's, what's where he's going here? The inner strength, confidence in his dwelling, understanding of his life. Now he wants us to experience his divine fullness. How, how is that possible? How can we be filled with all the fullness of God? I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. It's, it's like trying to take a cup and going down to the ocean and say, I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill the cup with the ocean. You can't do that. That cup cannot contain the ocean. Come on, right? But I'll tell you what you can do. If you take that cup and you submerge it, 
Because it's a paper cup, it absorbs you, you submerge it. That cup, listen, can, can, can get to the point where why the cup can't fill the ocean up. The ocean can fill the cup up and submerge it. And just if it stays in it long enough, all of a sudden it starts partaking in the, in the total fullness of that water and that ocean. So then soon, it doesn't take long, that cup becomes so absorbed that the ocean and the cup now, you can't tell one for the other. That's what Paul is saying here. Listen, our poor frames of humanity, we, we can never contain the fullness of God. But we are filled with his fullness. How? Through Christ Jesus. Look at this verse, Colossians 2. He said, for in him, talking about Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in Jesus. So again, if I'm strengthened by inner, by, by, in my inner man, if I have Christ dwelling inside of me, I, I can get to the point where I start experiencing and knowing about this love by experiencing it. And then all of a sudden, I begin to have the fullness. You see, Paul writes in Colossians, he said, it's in Christ that dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. So, so what is he saying? He's simply saying that in Christ, all the power that you need is in Christ. All the peace that we need is in Christ. All the victory that we need is in Christ. Jesus is the fullness that we need to complete everything that we have in our life. If there's no vacancy, there's no empty places, when we are complete in Jesus Christ, He consumes us, He controls us, He guides us, He leads us. Every day we get up and we say, listen, what's in it for Jesus today? Woo! I turned the radio station. I left WIFM. And I turned over to WIFG, and I wake up in the morning. I said, oh, I got breath. I got a pause. Oh, I know I got to go to work, but what's in it for Jesus today? How can my life, be, my life be a light for Jesus? Come on, somebody understand that. We're not standing in our own self. It's not about our merits. It's not about our right. We are standing in the fullness of Christ. We are standing in all of his merits and all of his rights. We are complete in Christ Jesus. I love that. Complete to have all the necessary appropriate parts to finish making or doing something, to bring it to a place of wholeness and perfection. You understand that's how God sees you? We got to get away from this, I don't have what I need. Yes, you do. Everything you need, God has put in your life. It's like Moses, you got to recognize this staff that I've been using for 40 years to kind of lead the sheep around. God says, what's in your hand, Moses? And Moses says, throw it down. Understand, you have what you need if you put your trust in the one that has given you what you need. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You have every, when you're in Christ... It's the reason why when you're in him and you're troubled and you're discouraged and you're depressed, you don't have to turn to a bottle or a pill or a prescription. Everything you need is in Jesus. Oh, they hurt me. They, they broke a promise. They broke my heart. I'll never get over this. Yes, you will get over this if you understand you are complete in Jesus. He'll give you all the forgiveness that you need if you will be willing to allow it to work out of your life. Am I preaching? Again, this is what Paul is praying. He's asking inner strength, confidence in his dwelling, understanding of his love, experience his divine fullness. And then lastly, Paul affirms the power of God to answer this. So Paul is saying, listen, we, we've had some big ask, right, A-S-K, A, big ask. There's some big ask throughout the inner strengthening. When we think it's the outward man. No, Paul, that, that's a big, to, to have confidence in his dwelling, that Christ could, will be at home in you, that's a big ask. Oh, well, Jesus don't want to habitate with me. Yes, he does. 
you got to trust that. He wants to be at home. He wants to relax in your life, trusting and knowing that every step you take, he's right there with you. It's a big ask to say, God, I want to understand your love. That breath, that height, that, that, that width, I want to understand that. I, I know it's past understanding. Would you really let me experience that? To in my life, so when I look at other people and I see their loneliness, I see their brokenness, I, I see that they're searching and looking, that I look at them and I say, God, oh, help use me to show them how much you love them. You follow me? And then he ends up with saying, in his ben- this is the benediction part of the prayer. Unto him, verse 20 and 21, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask that we think. According to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. To him that is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly, to a great degree, beyond the usual. Listen, listen to the God that we have. He is the God of beyond the usual. You know why a lot of churches become a monument instead of staying a movement in their communities? They just believe for the usual stuff. Well, we're just, we're just kind of believing for the usual stuff, hoping, hoping people will come to church on Sunday and just, and just hoping that we'll be nice to each other, hoping that when we need to change the carpet that we won't, we won't argue. God is the exceeding God. To do beyond the usual, greatly, very, very much, abundantly, super abundant. Those are all terminologies that that grew. Excessive, overflowing, surplus, over and beyond, more than enough, extraordinary, above the ordinary. That's the kind of God that we have. And Paul is praying at his benediction. He said, listen, I want you to be able to understand the power that is able to bring all this other stuff to you, the inner strength that in Christ's dwelling, experiencing his love, everything. He said, the power is exceedingly abundantly above all that you have been asked that you think. What would it be like this year if you stop asking for a I just want a normal relationship. I, I, I just want to have an average. I just don't want to fight. What if you started asking for an exceedingly abundantly relationship? Sister Rhonda and I had our three of our grandchildren with us, three of the eight, all week long. Uh, Pastor Matt Leslie was off do, doing some things. And, uh, you know, grandkids around uh, you know, the whole house changed, every, the atmosphere. Well, all week long, it went while she was busy, I was busy. And, and uh, Saturday morning, you know, I'm always up there. Saturday morning, she'd come downstairs, and she's going to cook some ba- breakfast. And I'm looking at her, and I feel something. You know, just, you know, not, not just the, you know, we're going to be married 46 years in a few months. And people say, well, you know, the normal thing about you've been married that long, you know, everything gets gold in the rut. And, you know, you, you know it ain't about, uh, you know, love and feelings. Well, it's about love and feelings sometimes. Oh, are you with me? Now, listen, our, our, the boys were there. We, 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 we know how to behave ourselves. But I'm, I'm trying to tell you a point. I'm taking you to a point if you'll hang out here with me. I'm taking you to a point, I promise you. Listen, what, what, what so many of us, listen, so many times we are settling for less than what God wants to do in our life. Because we think, well, you know, it's just to use you. you you've been married 10 years or 15 years or you have a baby, you have three babies, whatever. It's the usual thing. You know, you work, I work. It's the usual. We grow apart. No, no, no. God said, I want you to do the unusual. I want you getting closer, not further away from each other. I want you to look at each other with that same passion that you had 45 years ago. I, when I got married on June 21st, 1974, we was getting married at 7 o'clock. I lived an hour and a half away from where we was getting married. I left at 11 o'clock that morning to get there. 
I couldn't wait. I just couldn't wait. I was going down the interstate, and I knew I had all these hours in front of me. So I drove 40, I only I had a 64 Chevelle, no air conditioning, June 21st, first day of summer, Alabama, it's hot. Already got my white suit on because I got married in white, just like she got married in white. Had my white suit on. I'm sweating, the windows are down, but I am smiling because in just a few hours, we're going to be united as one. I'm going to do my best to enjoy the one as much as I can. And listen, I'm, I'm telling you that. Listen, I'm telling you that because some of you are sitting here today and you're allowing the enemy to rob you of the joy. Same way it is with your kids. Same way it is with your life. Same way it is with your job. Listen, don't, don't settle for just the normal, the usual. Understand that we have a God that is above the exceedingly mindset that we can think sometimes. It's the reason why this church challenges us. Vision challenges me. It, it challenges, and I'm glad for that. I don't want to be sitting here just doing what we can do in our own strength. I want to do only what God can do. Come on, are you with me? I want to see God do miracles in people's lives. I want to see God work mighty wonders in, his, in people's lives. Mark Batterson, some of you have read his book, The Circle Maker. He, he, there's a quote in there. He said, bold prayers honor God. God honors bold prayers. He is offended by anything less. How many times have we offended God because we're afraid to ask for something back? Stop praying, Lord, just, just help my kids survive and help them make it in school. And no, no, no. When I was dropping off the kids to, to, to school, the, the few days I would do that, the last question I would ask them, because I know their dad and mom always, what are you guys? And they would respond, we are mighty men of God. I said, the school needs you. The school needs you. Your classmates need you. You're mighty men of God. Stop just praying little prayers for your kid. Look at their gifts. Look at their talents. Look at their abilities and say, God, you are super abundant, God. I want you to take my child far beyond I can ever imagine. I want you to do with him or her what you desire to do in their life. Wow. God honors bold prayer. He's offended by anything else. He went on to say there's nothing God loves more than keeping promises, answering prayers, performing miracles, and fulfilling dreams. Come on, Amber. Listen, God is able to do more, provide more, heal more, equip more, restore more, renew more, to save more than any of us can ask or think. Let's believe it. Let's believe it. God is able to do that. So what do we do with this prayer? How do we pray this together? First thing, write it down. Let's meditate on the truths of the gospel. Meditate on what Paul is saying here to fit. Inner strength, confidence in Christ as well. Understanding his divine love. Experiencing his divine fullness. Affirming the power of God to answer this prayer. Meditate on those, on those principles. And then secondly, pray this for yourself and pray it for each other. Because I don't know if, if you caught it, if you missed it, but in verse 18, he said that we should be strengthened to comprehend with all the saints. In other words, Paul is saying, listen, I'm not just praying this for me. I'm praying it for you. I, I, I want all the saints. It's not just for an elite few. God's not just saying, oh, I want the, I want the board at Heartland to, to, to experience. I want the board to know the inner strength and the confidence. Under, no, no, it's for all of us. We need to pray this for every one of us. We need to pray for each other. We need each other's prayers. We need each other's perspectives. And Paul is saying, I'm asking God to do this for you. God, give us that inner strengthening. As I get older, I want to take care of my body. I'm, I'm trying to not eat as much banana pudding and, and Twinkies. And I love it when the grand boys are over and 
Rhonda really stocked up on them real thick oatmeal, the big, not the little small ones, the big ones. Oh, my God, that's so good. I know we had to eat two boxes all the way. But I, listen, I, and I, listen, I repent, I repent. Lord, forgive me, Jesus. But I want my inner man to be strong. I want to be an Ernie Bricks that when you see me 10 years from now, 15 years from now, yeah, my body may look a little bit different to you. But my faith stuns you to say, oh, oh, man. Pastor Phil has still got so much faith. He's still dreaming. What about you? Is that what you want in your life? To have this confidence that Christ is so at home with you? I know many of you have heard this illustration that others have used it, but I find it so helpful at times. I have a chair that I sit in usually early in the morning. It kind of faces the outside window. I don't get to see much because it's dark out there. But I, across from me, I'm this little wooden plank chair. It's an old chair. It's my, my, my granddad's chair that um, I stole from my, I mean, my mom gave to me. Uh, and I will take that chair, Randy, and I will, I will turn that chair around in front of me while I'm sitting in my chair. I turn that chair around. It's empty. But I take a pillow and I put it right there. I say, Jesus, I, I want to just talk to you today. And I, I, know it's, I know it seems so silly, but I want to tell you, I get to having a conversation with him. It's, it's just like I almost, I'm not telling you I see things, but it's like almost. I know I sense in there. I feel his presence. I want him to be at home like that for some of you. Listen, some of you, God is longing to hear from you, but you're still not calling out to him you think, because you think he doesn't want to talk to you. He does. Come on, you believe that? He does. Man, what an incredible service. Great prayers. We'd love to connect with you about the great prayers that you have in your life. If you would email us at pastorphil at hcc.ag, We'd love to pray with you. Or if you have anything that you would like to celebrate, we'd like to celebrate with you. And again, if you would like to connect with Heartland and what God's doing through our generosity, we'd invite you to our website, hcc.ag. Click on the giving tab and just trust that God can do something in your personal life, in our community, internationally. God's doing incredible things. Again, we're praying for you and we're excited to see you next time.